the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture, mental health to economics, relationships to life lessons. Join us each and every Tuesday on WAC 90.1 FM. The Living Room. Casual conversations on serious topics. It is now 6 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked on to the true nation station WACK 90.1 FM, where we are culture cr- 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 crazy. Um, first and foremost, let's kick it off as we always do, all right? We must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gifts of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us, and you know how I say it. Not just the Tainos and the Kalanagos, the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago, because we all know that Columbus lied, but also to our brother in music, Tony Prescott, and the P this week stands for... Well, I was going to say um, perspective, because we're going to get a, a little information as to the perspective of uh, the, the, the criminal and the, the victim, you know, right. but... I had to change it to pedestrian, boy. <laughs> because all the drivers park up all day. Well, that was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, know yeah. what? You know what? The P this week stands for Protective Services. To quote my um my brother in music, Pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that is cool in the ball. Yeah, cool in the ball. Yeah, wrong. Pretty also has a song called Say Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, correct is right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you're willing to try. Anyway. Say so, yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, <laughs> you, you clearly in a good, you had a good weekend. You look like you had a good weekend. It was all right. It was all right. But um, you know why I had a good week- weekend? And this is why I'll take the opportunity to wipe my feet and hang my hat. I want to hang my hat on that female officer on Saturday morning who made a decision not to wreck me while I was in the ATM on Superior Street. With that being said, now I wanna wipe my feet. Where am I supposed to park? Hmm. You, but Republic Bank car park has, I believe, a parking space for two vehicles? Three, and all were mm. filled. Hmm. So, what was your what was your recourse? Well, what you, you were supposed to make a block and come back? You, you know. and, and on a, a month and weekend, you think I would have get cash in the ATM? Hmm. That's another thing I had to wipe my feet on. The banks and them replenish mm-hmm. the ATMs over the weekend. Right, right, right. So, you're saying is the bank and them have no money either? Yeah. Hmm. No. Yeah, no. Retracted. Uh, Retracted. Okay. okay, cool, 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 cool. Because I know um, what the if you like the iron shirt and thing, no. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, And also, hang my hat, West Indies, excellent victory on Sunday. You rarely message me and tell me how cricket. Mm-hmm. Plastic Baby. fan. <laughs> well played. Um, Although, so, we, as we discussed, them plastic fan expensive, eh? Boy, you know, yeah. and they make, as, as you said, make sure and clean your fan. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you fully notice, but it have, um, it have more than more than one reason to get um, a little cough or cold this last round. Boy. Between the regular seasonal um, pollens and dust, we have Sahara, while, while, while we have weather turning, or yeah. turn as the case may be. We still have so, COVID out there. Right. Uh, let me put this way. Believe it or not, there still are um, the occasional deaths and there are still numbers. Uh, is it there what it was before? Thank God. I, I think the last set of numbers I saw was 90 and 3. Right. And for Tobago, was, I think, uh, two deaths. And for Trinidad and Tobago, a total of 35. So what I'm saying is... It, it's the, still there. 
I mean, but people still losing lives. We still panini in. Right? Uh, it's not done. Now over, I see places remove all the social distancing stickers and all kind of thing. I'm like, well, are you still going to choose to wear my mask when I out and about? But that would be my personal choice. I believe the, the, the general consensus is that the mask man is going to be lifted soon. Yeah, they're saying that by mid-July, which is what, next week? Yeah, next oh. week, they're ready, ready. I read, ready, ready. Um, ready. Ricardo, what about you? Any Anything you want to touch on before we, we, we welcome our guest? Well, I actually want to wipe my feet on our uh, way boy. You know, I nearly go, I nearly go to pl- place the blame in the wrong places. I go to blame our internet and telecommunication providers because every day is a different kind of internet problem. But that is partially because people cutting wires. People taking wire from every and anywhere now. So... I wipe my feet on um on the lack of action because you see the issue is not so much who cut any wire. The lack of action is um the people who is on the people who paying for it. Cause them fellas ain't um loading ship and selling it themselves. So I just saying that if our protective services don't know who buying copper wire, well then anyway. Anyway. I on your shit. Anyway. Hey. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So Go what ahead. I would like to um hang my hat on though is the guests we've had so far with these conversations. Right, right, right. right. Addressing the violence as our ongoing series. Let's put it this way. Every time we think, well, maybe the, the spike is over, you're seeing something else. Right? First it was gender based on domestic violence, then there were incidents of school violence, then we saw some uh, protective services and the question of uh, uh, police killings and excessive force. But Iran, we're coming out of a weekend where the numbers were in double digits 15 plus. 20. It was 21, I think, over the past weekend. Right? Some were police killings, some were citizen on citizen, some were gang violence, which is still might still be citizen on citizen. And so, some, some still undetermined. Right? It we, we've seen violence against uh, migrants. We've seen violence against citizens. We've seen all sorts of things. All sorts of things happening. So I want to take the opportunity to focus on our next episode. So far, we've had we've had Miss Susan Shepard, who is right. the um, our editor and multimedia professional. We've had Colin Dinoon, yeah, right, who's a attorney, attorney at law, and now we're gonna have. Miss Brittany Cayenne. Ooh, she's you a get any name right there, boy. I mean, oh gosh. She's a qualified forensic psychologist who has a master's of arts degree in forensic psychology with a specialization in law enforcement. Miss Cayenne's professional experience spans five years plus collectively in the mental health and social service sectors. Extending to her professionalism, Miss Cayenne proudly holds membership with both the American Psychological Association and the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Psychologists. As a forensic psychologist, there's an important part here. Ms. Kayan is committed to helping individuals identify, process, and resolve mental health challenges that negatively impact their lives. These individuals include members of law enforcement, survivors of sexual and gender-based violence, asylum seekers, refugees, and at-risk youth. Presently, Ms. Kayan practices under her private practice, Kayan Forensic Psychological Consultancy, and under her practice, she provides psychological assessment and evaluations, including clinical and firearms, counseling, mental health needs assessments, and psychoeducation. Uh, additionally, her clinical portfolio extends to working with a local non-governmental psychosocial support agency. So she is appearing as a citizen, not as a representative of the organizations that she's done work with and for. She is appearing as Brittany Kayan. Mm-hmm. Not Brittany Kayan of. Right. Right. Brittany Kayan, full stop. Yeah, correct is right. So let's use our stylish welcome as we bring into the living room Miss Brittany Kayan. Yeah. Let me go and change room. I talk about our data business. I'll make a little relocate in 12 seconds. What's all going on yeah. here? Oh, Lord Father.
And we are back inside the living room today as we continue our Addressing the Violence series. And today, Ricardo and I are joined by, uh, as we say, you know, Trinidad is two degrees of separation. So what we would call an old friend, but reunited over the space of the last couple of years in a different capacity. All right. So we are joined this evening by Miss Brittany Kayan. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you have. However, you can call me Brittany if you want to. I don't even say that my name is Brittany, actually. But it is. See, it's nice to like... know that, that you got okay. good cooling. I'm, I'm just Carlos. Thank you. And I'm Aaron. Not a Aaron. But yeah. Right? So, Brittany, you kick it off is probably one of the easiest questions you'll ever be asked in an interview. How are you doing? Do you want the automatic response or do you want the truth? Because the automatic response was just getting out there. But then I held back. Which one do you want? Um, in the living room, we, we appreciate vulnerability and transparency. So the truth is always welcome. Okay. So for the wider audience, I would say the automatic response is I'm good at fighting the good fights. But... The truth is that I am tired. Um, this was a very long week. As you can see, I have bags under my eyes. I'm a bit sleep deprived. So physically tired, ment <laughs> mentally tired. But right after this, I am going to do some sort of self-care, aka sleep, catch up on some shows, and then I'll be good to go. And, and just really lightly, what, what shows are you watching before we get into the heavy matters? Love and Marriage Huntsville. I have to get back to Always Always a Witch. That's a Spanish show. I'm trying to build my Spanish capacity. So I'm watching a lot of shows in, in Espanol. Okay. And Ricardo. Perhaps next time when it is you bring me back on here, I would be speaking fluent Espanol. And I would be very quiet for that interview. <laughs> Ricardo, how much do you streak it on now on Duolingo? Uh, 154. Excellent. Oh, mm. Excellent. I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been, um, I've actually been watching Breaking Bad in with the Spanish subtitles and <laughs> reading while um, I'm looking at it. And sometimes I just mute the TV and read the Spanish to see if I'm keeping up with what is going on. Yeah, but that's that's many um that's many things. I uh, want to I want to get more fluent in listening to Spanish mm -hmm. as well because I mean I could read and translate paragraphs on that type of thing, but in terms of the conversational is a very different ball game. So uh, and I'm gonna say that's something that I, that I remember from doing Spanish in forms one to three that reading. Spanish and conversational Spanish are two totally different ball games, and I applaud the both of you all for taking on that challenge of trying to learn another language. Hey, okay. as we um before we get into it, Aaron, you how are you doing, sir? You're good, all well, and you, you seem freshly shaved. So I presume there actually, will be some... actually no, I'm not freshly shaved. I have not freshly shaved. No, you know, not that you mention it, um, yeah, really. Really looking like you could use our face beat. Right and then? we get into today's program. <sighs> wow, these really wonder sometimes. Huh? Um, so Brittany, we're here today to discuss the mental aspect inside addressing the violence because we are be doing this for mind, body, and soul. Soul, sorry, I'm a soul. Soul. Right? So we are going to discuss mind today. And the first thing I want to, to to get into is the in terms of the mental health aspects and the trials and tribulations when it comes to the abuse factor and the victims and perpetrators right how, how could you shed some light on that okay when you say abuse factors of you said victims and perpetrators, perpetrators yeah okay so one thing that i would like to say if we are able to change the narrative in terms of victims, that will be helpful. Because when we say victim, 
we automatically place a stigma on them that they've lost something that they they were in a situation that they were not able to overcome so i prefer to use the word survivor meaning that they were able to escape a, a situation and that it, the word itself is an empowering one so moving forward if possible can we say su- survivor perpetrator that is right and that, right. that is actually the reason that we brought someone of your caliber to have this conversation to help us reprogram the way that we perceive these um yeah, because with, with, if you if you think about it when it says i call you a victim it's this kind of pity who is me who is you you were in an unfortunate situation you didn't overcome it and subconsciously what does that what that does is maintain a state of sadness depression learned helplessness but if it is i say that you're a survivor that narrative gives that person hope it gives them a sense of positivity and it allows them to maintain that sense of overcoming Uh, another thing i notice is that we tend to talk about the survivor most in most cases and we don't necessarily talk about the perpetrator so is it possible that we can talk about the perpetrator for a bit not a problem okay when we look at perpetrators in a situation now Firstly, before I, I, I begin that, is it that we're talking about domestic violence or are we talking about intimate pers- internet, intimate partner violence? Because there's a difference. Really? It, there is. <laughs> well, that sounds like a perfect place to start. Well, okay. you're the professional here. When we talk about domestic violence, it's violence. It's a dynamic between individuals within a household. It doesn't matter what relationship it is. So it can be a child and a parent, two parents. It can be a grandmother and a child. Whereas with intimate partner violence, that speaks to a dynamic between two intimate partners. So well, we, we, we need to take into consideration that there are same-sex partners. There are also heterosexual partners. And a core feature of intimate pers- intimate partner violence is that two persons don't need to be living together for that violence to be understood that is something that we need to address so look at domestic as everyone living in the same residence and violence is is a dynamic within that family and then intimate partner violence being something between two persons who are not platonic they don't have to be living together wow so which one are we talking about well, well, no. Um, this seems like this mind episodes need to be split into two shows because <laughs> this is two totally different paradigms that Ricardo and I didn't even consider. This this is the point of having the insight from inside because, as you explained it there, yes, it's very reasonable to recognize that domestic means within that residence or within that household or living environment. An intimate partner means you could be with somebody that you're not living with and going through this thing, but I've never separated the two like this before. And this is the type of thing that we, we, this is the kind of conversation we want to have. Mm -hmm. So Um, I, (laughs) I, I, I think today we could deal with domestic and we could have another show to deal with the intimate partners. Okay. Baseline with both of them, it's about power and control. So someone in that situation or in that dynamic wants power, wants control. Usually the perpetrator themselves were abused. So it's like they perpetuated in a cycle that they were exposed to. Then sometimes it can be a matter of them trying to reassert themselves in a situation or deal with a self-esteem challenge. We do know that both men and women can be abusers, 
But for argument's sake, because of research, we do know that men are more likely the ones to be the perpetrators. So I, I don't mean to be discriminatory here or biased here, but more than likely I may say the male. So let's look at the context of a man being the perpetrator. He goes to work, he's emasculated, or he feels dehumanized. And because of his inability to regulate his emotions, he wants to get that anger out there. He wants to get that frustration, that um, disappointment, but he doesn't know how to manage those emotions. So now he displaces whatever emotions that he has to a target that he considers to be weak. And that's usually what happens. Sometimes you would see in perpetrators, persons who have antisocial behaviors. That means that they have disregard for others, others' safety, others' human rights. They have a disregard for rules and regulations. So that translates now into their dynamic with other persons that they relate with. Some of them, we know we love to say this person is a narcissist and we bandy about this term narcissist, not understanding what it is. But in some cases, some perpetrators do present with narcissistic tendencies. And what we mean by narcissistic tendencies is like they feel as though there is this grandiose or inflated sense of self. I am superior. So if I consider myself to be superior, then I would consider you to be what? This is a, 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 a let's pretend we're in school. If I'm superior, you are? Inferior. And if I believe that you are inferior, I will treat with you with scant courtesy. I will do as I please because I want to assert my dominance and I want to remind you who is in control. Mm. Now, I, I, I want to just flip this here and ask, for this kind of, we're talking about the perpetrator and the survivor, could this kind of, the, the, this kind of violence be portrayed within the workplace? Repeat what you said. Could this kind of violence be portrayed within the workplace where there's a supervisor or a manager or a CEO that doesn't have power or control at home and wants to come in the office and know display that type of dominance there and that is i mean well, we wouldn't call it domestic violence but yes we are the same actor but just in different spheres so how i really feel about our situation may not be compartmentalized or be contained in one area i can go to another environment and displace my anger or displace my tendencies so wow. you're correct Wow. Is this something that happened to you? And the next talking point that we're going to discuss <laughs> today. <laughs> and you, you talk about, you know, asserting that dominance and control and things like that. And something comes to mind with, again, Ricardo, we had a reference to video outside the place that morning now. Right. Right. Yeah, there was an incident, incident where members of the protective services were engaged in right. a physical altercation conflict, altercation right right with what appeared to be party goers right you know, you right. know and it, you... the video that ended with a man getting a busy volley to oh, head, oh, head, oh, head. he was just, already on the ground jed you just went from totally professional <laughs> and you take a total loose dive just but the video it, it it on video though it's not like i'm making it up i'm just making sure we're not seeing anything to put us in hotter water than we could end up in already you, you, you but, could have been but a I, more descriptive with the volley though than a volley it was a, anyway sorry yeah there, there was a, a regular a regular <laughs> action to head anyway um all it, don't feel we're not taking the matter seriously yeah, but it is a heavy topic so yeah. don't be don't feel we disrespecting the conversation by breaking the tension with the little riff every now and again but that's the video you're talking about right here right? right yeah yeah and and we, we reference that that's the video as the point of reference and we talk we i want to get into the protective services and why we see some of them in such violent incidents both on and off the clock okay 
you know, I have to do a shameless plug. So I'm a forensic psychologist. <laughs> I specialize in law enforcement. So I want to make sure that what I say here, I am all, I am both be, I'm being objective in the sense that I can lobby for civilians, but at the same time, empathize and lobby for law enforcement officers. I think usually in a case where it is, you see excessive force, and we do know that that is not limited to Trinidad and Tobago, that's international. So many factors play into violence seen by police officers. So you can go from the screening methods. It's easy for persons to be screened out as opposed to screen in. What does I mean by that? TTPS has a listing of requirements in order for you to be a police officer. If you meet those requirements and you do some vigorous exercising, more than likely you may be able to, to pass. However, there are key personality traits or behavioral traits that may be not, it, it's not looked at or it's minimized. So what we see is a lot of undesirable civilians coming into the police force. And I don't mean it as TTPS, let me be very clear here. I just mean... In the international... Internationally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have to remember that the role of a police officer is to protect and serve. If I am protecting and serving, that means I am suggesting that there's a threat. So more than likely, police officers move on a space of hypervigilance, hyper alertness. I need to exert force because I am here to protect and I'm here to serve someone. And this person who is in front of me is a threat. And then when you says you bring in the feature of resisting arrest, that means you are, the, the threat is becoming, it's, it's escalating. So then therefore I need to assert my dominance, assert my authority now, because my end game is to protect and sue. Right. Also, you have to remember that, yes, these individuals are vested, their power is vested in them, but they are individuals. They have their own mental health presentations. They have their own frustrations. They have their own anger. And so what you would have asked me just now, if they're in a, a domestic situation that is not favorable to them and they come now into a space, they may displace whatever anger, whatever frustration now into the working sphere. So there are so many factors that can contribute to excessive force. Does that make sense? A lot of. Yeah, Brittany, uh, Brittany, uh, by the way, <laughs> we have, what do you say? Brit, Miss Kayan, uh, what, 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 what you're most comfortable with us calling you for the next half we, hour? As you all would have stated before, we mm. are friends. So right. you can call me Brie, Brittany. My government name, Brittany Cayenne, it's fine. Mm -hmm. However, if it's a professional capacity, let's just say it's a client, especially a male client, I may mm -hmm. ask you to call me Miss Cayenne. Just now might be Dr. Cayenne. But well, so. um, I didn't want to I didn't want to throw it over there, but good. Because I actually I, I nearly call a doctor this morning, you know, and I say, let me wait until she, she says something. Speak it into existence. It's not yet here yet, but so we just gonna call it doc for the rest of the episode then. I don't want you to misinform the, the audience. Oh, okay, no problem. So yeah, just call me Brittany, Brittany, Brie. Hmm. It's fine. Yeah, you see, you run our tendency to overextend overextend the inside joke now. Like we are friends and we could call her doc for air Aaron, but the listeners don't know that. And no, 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 no. we go to the next point because you know how sometimes we get carried away and the time runs out and we don't get yeah, enough then, information across to the listeners. And then I end up having to cut Iran's monologues. You know, he could ramble. But Brittany, I'm... I'm, Bro, I'm what? Brie. So, Iran, yeah, we, we try to... So, Brie, what I'm, what I'm considering here is that the I'm same... In, in that. <laughs> premise. <laughs> the same premise. <laughs> 
where we have superiority and inferiority issues and then power displacement issues, anger displacement issues. Is this does this also translate to some I don't want to call it xenophobic behavior, but is it one of the things that we're seeing when it comes to the way we treat the migrant communities? Because a couple of years ago, we you know, the, the Chinese immigrants who came across to build and that type of thing was subject to some less than stellar Trinidadian behavior. And now we see in a different expression of that when it comes to mainland, particularly Venezuelan migrants. Mm -hmm. So is this same superiority, inferiority, uh, power, dis power and anger displacement, the type of thing that have some of the headlines looking in me that are looking and some of the behavior that we see in? That's a very hard question to answer because there are so many factors that go into xenophobia, into hate crimes against the Venezuelan community. Yes, in some instances, it's it, it can be superiority because Trinidadians, you are in my land. You, I, I'm, I'm speaking as a Trinidadian here. You are in my land. I have rights. I am afforded certain opportunities. You came here for whatever reason. I don't even want to know what it is you come here for. The point is you need me. You need my resources. So you will take what you get. Hmm. That's one way. And that's that's a function of superiority because I think that you are less than because legally, Venezuelans are not afforded the same legal opportunities, educational opportunities, socioeconomic opportunities in Trinidad and Tobago. And besides that, I believe that Trinidadians objectify Venezuelans. So you have the men who look at the women as objects. And whatever sexual desires that they may have, they can't do it to the Trinidadian woman because these Trinidadian women has, have rights. But if an undocumented Venezuelan comes, you can't speak. English anyway. No speaky, no speaky English. Some of them actually say that, which is also an extension of, of xenophobia, because you're making fun of, of the fact that someone doesn't have the same language capacity as you. So you can't speak English to make a report. Even if it is you make a report, some of the police officers care not to follow through with that um, report. Or in some cases, some officers may be a part of a ring which may bring in some of these migrants and it, 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 we, we've seen it recorded, documented. So it's not something that I'm speaking out of tune. Mm -hmm. So when men meet with, with, with Venezuelan women, they believe that whatever sexual desires or perversions, they can act it out on the woman and nothing will come out of it. And you have the women who believe that Venezuelan woman, my 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 man, my girl, watching the, the Venezuelans. I feel threatened. So, if I cannot address it with my partner, I'm going to displace. I realize I I feel I feel like displacement of emotions comes up a lot in our conversation right now. So I cannot address my partner. So I'm going to displace my discontent or my anger or my disappointment towards the woman. So it's a lot of factors that contribute to the xenophobia, to the hate crime. Um, I don't want to be clinical here, but I saw you took a deep No, no, breath. no. No, no, no. That's, well, one, uh, my grandmother... Is Venezuelan, well, was Venezuelan, God rest her soul. So I'm looking at my people, my Trinidadian people who celebrate in cosmopolitan society and melting pot and mix of cultures, literally going at the same type, uh, uh, attacking the same type of cultural immersion that led to most of us being who and what we are in Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm thinking to myself, would my grandmother have suffered like this when she came across 60, 60 years plus ago? Right. What I'm saying is, is this how we keep treating migrant communities 
And then, you know, a generation or two later, everybody jumping up a carnival, so it's all well and good now. A generation or two? Right you now. Mean, you mean in eight so. months' time? Yeah. Right. So I, I just feel um, I just feel like we keep missing the point. You know, and I feel like you, we keep dropping the ball. Let you tell it, though. These individuals are the same ones who love to speak. Oh, I have Spanish in me. I have Venezuela. No, I am quarter Spanish. Hmm. It's... But you hmm. know, this is something, personally, this is something that I grapple with all the time. Because I have clients who are a part of the migrant community. And to hear them, their stories is very saddening. And sometimes I myself feel powerless. And then there are times where my clients may not want to fully disclose their experience in Trinidad because I am a Trinidadian. Yeah. So they feel as though they cannot be raw, open, vulnerable with me because I am representative of the community that is hurting them. So it's a lot to deal with on both parts, on the clinician's part as well as on the client's part. I mean, one of the reasons I'm even learning Spanish is because I would love to be able to just tell somebody, good morning, how you're doing, and ask about the baby when they're walking down the street. But I can't even communicate to you that adequately that, listen, not all trainees are the way, not all trainees are the way that you've been treated. Not all trainees are threats. What I'm saying is, at what point in time have we lost our humanity in attempts to preserve and project our identity? This is, this, I, I feel entitled to certain things because I are trainee. Yeah, but you're born five miles away from the people that you're hating. What, 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 oh, we're missing something. <sighs> Correct is right. And I think one of the reasons displacement keep coming up Brie, as I mentioned, is because I'm starting to wonder, what do you, do you think, rather than me postulating here, do you think that violence is the problem or violence is an expression of the problem? Let me get back to you on that one now. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you went real deep there. <laughs> yeah. um, but, in, in... but you remember, violence is, violence is an expression. So violence is a behavior. So if I'm behaving violently, that means it's uh, an extension of what my values, my core values, my thoughts, my my evaluations or attitudes about something. So I think in order to, and I, this is not, you didn't ask this question, but in order to eradicate violence, we need to change how we perceive things, how we think about things, how we evaluate things and unlearn certain things that we have learned mm -hmm. in order to deal with violence. I wanted to say something. You said that you wanted to learn Spanish just to converse with the migrants and to let them know that it's not all of us that behave that way. They do know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that happens to me as well. I tend to overcompensate in personal spaces when I see, oh, you didn't realize that's what it is. It's overcompensation. I appreciate so it. My people are hurting, hurting you. Mm -hmm. I want to show you that it's not all of us. I want to show you that I am different. So whenever I'm in the grocery, wherever I see, I'll give you an example on uh, what today is on Saturday. I was conversing with a receptionist who is Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And the words that I knew in Spanish, I said in Spanish. And I believe it was because I was overcompensating because she understood English well. Eh? But it was just me trying to show her, okay, you are welcome here and it's not mm -hmm. all of us. And I guess to be because of a clinician, I always feel as though I am an anchor of support for someone. So if it's just one interaction that you had with someone that yeah. is positive, I believe that I could change her mood or change her outlook, even though it's maybe a temporary state. Um, for for the the men out there as well, they're just saying, um, 
you know how to tackle right be be pleasant but oh gosh stop tackling now please i've been in yes. colloquial terms here we talking about towards the migrant community or just in general or just across the board across the board because cat calling qualifies as tackling? street violence I yes because it's 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 on it's unsolicited yeah okay just, just for those who are unaware cat calling qualifies as street violence okay i would i, I mean have a question is, is this okay as i can ask a question here so of course you're talking about catcalling so i guess it's a conversation sexy mm. what about tooting your horn so if a woman is on the street mm. walking minding her own business and you deliberately blow your horn to get her attention for no reason other than to just see how she looks is that a form of catcalling it definitely it's vehicular it def- cat calling <laughs> vehicular calling it definitely to me uh that falls under harassment yeah that now, it definitely do, falls now, under the umbrella of harassment just for clarity's sake do i know the young lady no you don't it's just a okay. random on the street and i get that a lot sometimes i'll be on my own and blowing and then when i turn around you have nothing to tell me you're passing slow. Sometimes they might say, oh gosh, baby. <laughs> and then you just drive off. Yeah, that yeah, that's, is harassment. That's that creepy. Is street harassment. That's creepy, man. Street harassment is all uh, well, you do. Uh, well, not all you. All you understand. But for the listeners, I need you all to get that this is a thing that every single woman you know has suffered. And she's generally probably suffered it as a child i'm talking about in school uniform come up and i don't just mean secondary school uniform i mean primary school uniform you 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 saying that ricardo you know what i remember the maxi touts and conductors and the rumored relationships with school school dates you say you remember because there's a thing anything after 12 is lunch right when I'm at the office and I'm, I'm I'm going to heat my food in the microwave, yes, after twelve is lunch. But I don't it's know right what you're now. speaking of. Yeah. I want I want to I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge Abayo Jackson's production of After Twelve Air Lunch. Yeah, I just saying that there are people trying to um, address some of these cultural misnomers that we keep yeah, propagating. You you getting through there, right? Brother man, you know the weather what? these days, little off. That was whether the weight of your contrast. Brother, Jared, the, there's some high wind taking place by me. And my Hopefully window just slammed shut. Is the no, winds are change? Yeah, the it's, winds are change. Is the winds are change here? Right? But, but you know where else the, the winds of change should be blowing? Inside this addressing violence series, where, you know, we, we're not just talking about domestic violence, or as we learned today, intimate violence, or instances intimate partner violence thank you or instances of public violence when you speak of things with the protective services but there's also a trend now of witnessing videos of school violence care to shed some light on that for us Brittany the clinician and me would start off by saying there's something called social learning theory mm-hmm. so when children are exposed to models they now model the, the behavior so if a child is exposed to violence they know can become violent and it doesn't happen in all cases because i guess when we were younger we used to watch john clown van damme and whoever else chuck norris but we wouldn't ch- chuck chuck norris right <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get back into Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chuck Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We would not necessarily go and play serious bodily harm or grievous bodily harm on somebody else, but we would play with each other and pretend to to do Mm -hmm. the thing. So think about a child being in a community that, uh, and I like to call them, well, the, the correct term is youth at risk. 
So mm-hmm. the youth at risk is in a in a in a environment that perpetuates violence. They may see interactions with their family members as violent. They may go out to escape whatever is happening at home. They may go out onto the streets. It's in their community. Might go out on the block. And they see in some persons perpetuating a different form of violence. Mm-hmm. Then we have the exposure to the music. And this one is a very controversial thing because some people say that music does not influence violence but then there are studies that show it does i would say for myself i tend to get aggressive when it is i listen to ratchet music right but right. if i want to calm myself mm-hmm. if i want to calm myself i listen to relaxing music so we understand that from a base level music can influence behavior it can influence emotions so if my child is exposed to six outside all the time i'm not sure if it's like i can say that but well, if they're yeah. exposed to a, a, a specific type of music all the time music videos all the time then what do you expect mm-hmm. no. they will model the behavior no, I totally agree with you, Brittany, that this is a touchy topic because I think sometime earlier, either last month or month before we had, we would have touched on the influence of the lyrics of the music mm-hmm. and and things like that. And we also have to acknowledge that when, well, we were younger, we were singing 3845, dot, 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 or even more recently, we are the last man standing. Mm-hmm. Which is right. still a big tune. Right? Up. But now mm-hmm. they're talking about protocol. We have 100 dot 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 dot. Mm-hmm. Or Broadway, where we from, taught dot 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 dot. I try not to say too much of the lyrics now because. Yeah. yeah. By the way, our ellipsis, our ellipsis is only three dots. Sir. Anything after that, and it's just dramatic. Just throwing it all there. Thank you very much. I'm trying to be dramatic here. Ricard. This is me. Act- this is me actively listening. Right. So I do acknowledge that music does have a role to play in this situation, but I think in society as well, we have seen more instances of violence, not just in the music, but also in the movies and the shows that we are watching. Because you know, uh, sorry, Aaron, sorry. Go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. Yeah, no, what, what I was looking at here is people saying that music do influence violence or behavior, right? But they'll sing the children to sleep with a lullaby. I, what you're telling me is you'll, you'll teach me the alphabet to a song. You only know the national anthem in rhythm, but you're telling me that music does not impact learning, or behavior okay now admittedly i might have watched two three episodes of true blood and i never wanted to become a vampire or bite anybody on the neck be, uh, beyond the appropriate conditions for such what? what i'm saying is not everything that you see is going to immediately or ultimately affect your behavior but if you saturate yourself in an environment it is very hard to stay into the abyss without it starting to stare back Right? If you if you clean in fish whole day and you'll start to smell like fish. So what you're trying to say, Ricardo, is if in a 24 hour day I listen to 16 hours of Trini Bad, mm-hmm. the Trini Bad may start to affect my my behavior. Uh, so in my dream it for the next eight. It may change your perception. So if I listen to Soka for the for 16 hours, do mm-hmm. I now become a happy person? Because it is Soka is happy music. We might start to support local. Well played. We had to bring Bri- we had to bring Bri back for the music conversation. Yeah, but right. touche. I like that. Mm-hmm. Or and that is, that's if it, if if I listen to to slows for sixteen hours every day, does that mean I'm going to have a peaceful night's sleep? No. 
probably mean you're going to cry yourself to sleep and then cry more <laughs> when you wake up in the morning. Well, I remember what 90s R&B was doing to people. Hey. You know why we saw? Because we were listening. We were listening to Alohan 112 and them kind of thing. Right? And Alanis Morset <laughs> and, and Shari. Right? Now when you listen to what R&B is, um, but, hey, Jared, totally, it's a different. Totally, different. totally off topic. On Sunday, mm-hmm. I had a, a boat ride to, to play on, right? Mm-hmm. And that, is, that, is, that was the that is Ferretta? Ferretta, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sunday morning, you know, I had to go and sort out some music and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I was listening to the lyrics of a Doja Cat. I need to know. Is that that song? <laughs> Oh. I don't want the rain to fall, so I wouldn't sing it. No, no, no please don't. Um, okay. not, not for that reason, but also it had one from somebody named Ashley Stalker or something like that, Young. Hmm. It's like, yeah. my word, what? They're just out there putting it there straight in front of your face. No kind of room for imagination, nothing. Yeah, the, the, the whole feelings about it. Now, nobody's singing about feelings about it. They're singing about it <laughs> emotionally. Back in our day, they used to sing about the feelings. Yeah. Right? I cry whole night. Nah, tonight? No? No, they used to say I don't cry whole night. I, I want to go back <laughs> to R- R&B where I could slide in the rain on my knees outside to get bruised no. up on the barber. No, it's up in the front slide in <laughs> the rain right now. Outside, house, yeah, man, but... a window. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, down on bended knee. Now it's Versace on the floor. Right? What, hey, 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 hey. That's that, that, a big thing. That's it. That's it. They're not singing as much about love anymore as they're singing about sex. Yeah. Right? But that's a whole other conversation yeah. for a whole other time. But Okay. But then they would say, by us having this conversation, we are trying to limit their expression. Yeah, no, nah, you're not trying to limit And their that music is not supposed to be taken literally because it's a form of artistic expression. You really want to get me started with this? We could go and then the, the, the same artist, the, you know who's saying that? The listener. The artist will come out now and say, listen, I'm singing what I know about because what I know about not being expressed. Yeah. Right? This is their reality. So the, the producers are saying that this is their reality and this is sort of feeling. And then the consumers are saying, nah, well, it's just. So there's a... I'm not sure if you know that right now in the United States, there is this big controversy about the court using the lyrics of a song to Mm -hmm. incriminate the artist. (laughs) (laughs) Say it louder than here, but Bobby Smither. It did rhyme with, yeah. Right. So, Yes, at some point it can be artistic expression, but to what it is you said, they are literally using music as a platform to express or verbalize what it is they have experienced. I mean, you were the last man standing and then they realized why the others weren't. No, that was, that, that was a voice note. Anyhow, um, what? Anyway, but what, we are getting no. perilously close to the hour of 7 p.m. here in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm going to take this opportunity to invite Brittany again, because we really didn't get to touch on some of the more serious issues you wanted to touch on. And as well as we need to, well, that's a sum of. And we also have to get into the intimate partner violence, which we learned at the start of tonight's show. So, Brittany, would you be open to coming back to have a second conversation with us? Of course. Whenever you all are ready. But once I get ample notice, because I'll be busy. Not a problem. Yeah. And next this yeah. time, Ricardo will make a sandwich yeah. and send fair. Great stuff. I don't want I've... fish sandwiches. I, I want chicken or beef. Uh, he's making a mean tuna. Okay, well, yeah. I, I cool with tuna. I do make a mean tuna. Seriously. It's legendary. I've... See, now money pool behind you there. No, you see, this is just what's happened. Tuna is not wildlife, right? Tuna is not you wildlife. Sure? You sure? To somebody somewhere in the world, tuna is wildlife. All I'm saying is money pools, money pools are pest control, right? I'm just saying. I don't know what right. tuna does save you from. 
to yeah, not um, some other life form on the bottom of the ocean. Life cycle, you remember that? You remember life cycle that, that we lived when we were younger. Wow, sure. Ricardo. This Yo, is this so. comes from the guy that just got a tree in, in biology. Come on, Ricardo. Who got a tree in biology? Me. Oh, well, anyway, so here's what's happening, right? Um, <laughs> even though it may have seemed like we went off topic, we addressing the mental aspects mm-hmm. of the violence. And all you need to understand that it's not just about what comes out. It's what goes it's in. It's also what goes in. Um, so I want to thank you, Brittany, for joining us. I uh, want to also second Aaron's invitation, but I want to go one step further and invite you to express any closing remarks that you may have, social media handles, anything like yes, that. Yes, man. Mm-hmm. I, teach, I teach you one or not. Okay. I just want to tell you thank you for bringing me to this space. And there's something that always comes to me. The future is now. And what I mean by that is when we were younger growing up, we would be like, oh, I want to be just like this person. We would see somebody on the media and that person, for whatever reason, would have resonated with us. They would have been relatable. And now we are in a space, we are grown ups now. So the same thing that we expected of adults, we now have to do. And I think that this platform can enact change. And the same topics that we were talking about, especially with school violence, if we are able to touch one parent or one child that is listening in with their parents, we are enacting change. So hopefully that child or even on a, a, one of our peers say, okay, well, I want to be like them. That's all I want to say. So thank you for the space. Well, um, oh, I I have to echo the thanks, personally. Um, I tell a lot of my friends that your diet is not just what you eat. Your diet consists of who you talk to, who you hang around, the music that you listen to, the books that you read, the movies that you watch. Please be mindful of what you consume. Right? This is your Shruti DJ here at 868. I'm always great and trust me, I am never late. And I remind you as usual that love is the currency. So spend some today. Let somebody know that you love them. All right, guys. Um, up next is Mr. Desmond with the big band. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Ricardo, take it away. This is Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the local stage. Thank you for joining us in the living room. Remember, guys, your glass is opaque. We don't know how much time remains. So whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. I uh, thank you for joining us for this ongoing series addressing the violence. As you could tell, we're not here to just tell statistics. We here to actually get some insight from the individuals who are on the front line. This is about affecting the change here first. Right, so that uh, again, thank you, Bree, for joining us. Brittany Kyan of uh, Forensic Psychology, TT. Kyan, Forensic Psychological Consultancy. But if you're talking about my handle. Mm. Cayenne dot I feel like you could put that a little. Yeah, that that's coming yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, at the end of the day, this is this is what it is—a collaborative effort from so many different agencies, so many different individuals. Because what's going on cannot continue. To quote our guest, the future is now. There's no kick in the can down there. <laughs> the, the... The, the Aaron, Ricardo, and Brittany that you know, that you knew at the start of tonight's program is not the Aaron, Brittany, and Ricardo that you know now. Remember that. I like that. The ABC, boy. The ABC. And by the way, just in case you're really saying that music to have an influence, try to say the national anthem without singing it, huh? Forged <laughs> from the love of liberty. You're done in rhythm already. Because Trinidad and Tobago talk with rhythm. We talk with rhythm. That's our next story. Woo. Woo. Yeah, we boy. Talk, we, <laughs> sing, you, we talk yeah, with a sing song. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, Ricardo. Yo, guys, join but us I- when, we bring, when we bring Brittany back. Because clearly, clearly we had to continue this conversation within this series. But just remember, the Afrobeat alphabet is real vibes. Well, have a good night. Way, boy.